Polish military is the best funded and the most politically supported uh, by the respective public and regime in the region. That's Poland. Um, and I argue in the book that continues a pattern already created under communism. Uh, you know, another paradox of the whole Polish case, so I mentioned the martial law. Uh, it is perhaps less better known, uh, less well known, uh, that a recent, well not so recent, but definitely post-communist survey of Polish public opinion showed that the majority of Poles today still retrospectively approves the opinion, approves the General Jaruzelski's action in December 1981 of launching the martial law. And by the way, Polish military was a highly trusted institution under communism and after communism. Polish military was highly funded under communism and after communism, right? Poland is a fairly militarized in terms of political culture nation uh, with a fairly high threat sense and perception of external threat. And Poland continues to uh, see itself as a medium-sized, strategically significant country that deserves to have a well-funded military and um, vigorous, robust defense policy uh, that seeks to carve out Poland's independent role in the strategic relationships in, in Central Europe. That's kind of what we see. Hungary doesn't see itself clearly at least in terms of actual behavior in those terms. Uh, uh, Hungarian military was underfunded under communism and continues to be underfunded after communism. Uh, Hungarian people, as expressed uh, through surveys of public opinion, uh, hold their military in really low esteem and think that any type of military spending is an unnecessary luxury in, in the current reality, perhaps extracted by the US or NATO allies who want to see evidence of NATO solidarity. Uh, and I imagine in Hungarian perception, it's about senseless wars like Afghanistan that serve no purpose and simply waste Hungarian lives and money. Uh, clearly, Hungarian public doesn't see uh, well-funded, robust defense policy as any type of priority for Hungary. Uh, they are concerned about other issues, such as economic issues, or perhaps uh, the quote-unquote Muslim invasion, or whatever it is. Uh, but the priorities of Hungary are the opposite of Polish priorities in terms of defense policies. And I imagine Slovakia and Czech Republic, and again, those are Jim Peterson's case, are somewhere in between uh, those realities. And by the way, those countries each follow their own uh, very specific patterns of political development that are convergent with those other countries, but also divergent in very interesting ways. And this is precisely what the book is about.